All right, what's going on, team? So first of all, I just want to thank Coach Moore for all the shout outs, brought up the word mindset four times. So it's a heck of a transition. So I'm both excited and challenged. Excited because I'm here with you right now, challenged because normally my presentations are an hour and I got to do this in 10 minutes. So I'll make it real quick, we'll cut right to the chase. I talk real fast and everything I say is, well, most things I say are pretty important, according to me. So please listen carefully. First thing I need is a volunteer. Who'd like to come up? All right. All right, we wonder why our kids are not pulling the trigger and they're not aggressive. They're gonna do what they see with their coaches, so we gotta do it, we gotta step up. Good, my man, so if you could balance that on one finger, please. Look on the bottom. Yeah, just look down at the bottom. One, no, no, the tip of your finger, come on. Oh. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for volunteering, by the way. Ah, a little oh, tough, all right, let's do it again. Look down at the bottom. A little tough. Okay, so I what do we? Be the man for the job. No, well, okay, that's and now right, exactly. What do we tell ourselves when we don't do something? When we mess up, when we make mistakes, we tell ourselves, "I'm no good." What's wrong with me? And nine times out of ten, little changes in your focus have huge impacts on your outcome. Now we're going to do the same exact thing, and this time look at the top. Aha! Maybe he was the man for the job. Good. So now, thank you. So give him a hand. Good. We stay up here. So in those 20 seconds, in those 20 seconds, did he get any stronger, smarter, or better looking? No. How could that possibly right. happen? <laughs> not, my, not my man right here. <laughs> right. But what did he change? Honestly, though, what did he change? His focus. And small changes in your focus have huge impacts on your outcome. So our goal is the same as yours. You could sit. Thank you. So our goal is the same as yours. Slide that out. We want to build champions in sports, in school, and in life. Obviously, we're all about building champions. We work, with the, we work with the Olympic Greco team. We work with the women's Olympic team. We work with some of the top UFC fighters. So basically, we've taken the toughest people in the world and we've made them tougher. So of course, we're all about success. But bigger picture, bigger picture, most athletes aren't gonna go on to be college athletes, right? So we gotta say, how do we improve them in school, in their social lives, in their careers, and everything in the future? So using re wrestling as a metaphor for their whole life. Of course, we all wanna win. We wanna help you guys win. But how do we take those lessons? Confidence is confidence, right? Mental toughness is mental toughness. Whether we're talking about competing in Atlantic City, whether we're talking about taking the SATs or ACTs, saying no to drugs or peer pressure, right? Asking the pretty girl of the senior prom, do you have the mental toughness or not? Do you know the skills to relax under pressure or not? Job interview, right? These kids come fresh out of college. Three adults right in their face. Why should I hire you with no experience? When the last guy who came in had 10 years of experience, why should I hire you? So do you have those mental skills or not? And because a lot of people are not focusing on it, we see the same kind of what we call mindset red flags, not competing with the killer instinct. So see if this sounds familiar. You've probably seen our mindset red flags all over the place on our huge social media presence where you see not having the killer instinct, not pulling the trigger, giving good opponents too much respect, being a slow starter, What's usually the worst match of the tournament? When you're competing and also back when, when you know, we were all competing when our kids are competing, what usually is the worst match? First one. first one, that's it, just shout it out if you have the answer, right? Usually the first match is our worst match, being a slow starter. What's the problem with that? Okay, regions, day two, that's a semifinal match, right? States, that's a quarterfinal match in the morning. NCAAs, it's a quarterfinal match. On day three of the NCAAs, that's your only match of the day. So you can't afford to be a slow starter, right? Giving good opponents too much respect when we know someone's ranked. Focusing too much on records, rankings, seedings, or predictions. We get in our own head. So those are common things that we see, and it's because of the training paradox. So why do we have the mindset red flags? We call this the training paradox. You've probably heard me say this before. What percentage of wrestling is mental and what percentage is physical, if you have to say? Just call it out. What do you think? There's no right answer. 90. 80, 50, let's even give a low number, let's say between 50 and 90%, right? So now I ask you, how much time are you training physically versus mentally? See what I'm, see what I'm getting at there? And it was the same thing when I was competing, even in college, even at the University of Pennsylvania, my coach was Zeke Jones, you know, world champ, silver medalist in the Olympics. We, we, you know, we worked a little bit on it, but it wasn't constantly worked on. It was always strength, it was always conditioning, it was always technique, which is great, you need that, and you probably need more of that, but how do we bridge the gap if we're saying the sport's between 50 and 90% mental? So that's where we come in and we bridge that gap. 
Now, different, so we call it the training paradox. We say it's 90% mental, we train 90% physical, right? So big thing to understand with wrestling mindset, what this is versus what this isn't. This isn't regular sports psychology. It's not therapy. It's not motivational speaking. It's not counseling. I love all of those things. I'm a big proponent of motivational speaking. All over my Instagram is my favorite motivational speakers. I'm a big proponent of sports psychology. I study all those guys, right? Therapy, I'm originally a school psychologist. I used to work, what's I guess, 15 minutes down the road over at South Brunswick Middle School. So I'm all about counseling and therapy and psychology, but this is a little bit different. So when you think about mindset training, I want you to think about it as strength training for your mind. Strength training for your mind. So. How many months out of the year are serious athletes weightlifting? 12, right? Okay, same thing with technique. Serious wrestlers are training. How many months out of the year mentally? Um, on their technique, rather. 12 months out of the year. They're going to their club. They're going to tournaments. They're going to the nationals. So if you look at technique, you look at strength, how many months out of the year do you think you should be working on your mindset? 12, year round. So when you think about it, when you stop and think, it makes a lot of sense. Right? Same thing. There's different muscles in our body, right? You have some athletes, they have strong legs, but relatively weaker arms. That's true. We have some athletes, they have a strong neck, but relatively like a weaker grip. So there's different muscles in the body. It's the same thing with our mind. There's different mental muscles. You could have athletes that are very strong mentally with the motivation muscle, right? They're highly motivated. They're training all the time, but they don't have the mental muscle of relaxing under pressure. They get into Atlantic City, and we see this every year. I talk to a lot of the wrestlers. You know the names of them. One o'clock, two o'clock the night before the state finals because they can't go to sleep. They can't shut it down. And they step out in the states. They step out first round, last round, whatever it is. Their eyes are as wide as saucers. They're like a deer in the headlights. Biggest match of the year, and they wet the bed. We see it all the time. I've been there in different situations, right? So I'm not preaching to anyone. So just like there's different mental muscles, Motivation versus relaxing under pressure. You could have another guy who's highly confident. Seems like he has it together mentally. He's highly confident, he has that swagger. He walks in the building like he owns the joint. However, his goal setting isn't there. His action planning isn't there. Off the mat, he's, he's hooked up with the wrong crowd. He's pulled in the wrong direction. He's on Netflix all night, right? Drinking, drugs, bad relationship, girls pulling him down. So he's very strong with confidence, but he's very weak with his goals and his action planning. So does that make sense? There's different physical muscles in the body. You could be real good on top and you could be horrible on bottom or vice versa. Same thing with our mind. We could be strong in some areas and weak in other areas. And having the benefit of working with literally tens and thousands of athletes around the country, and it's not just me, we have 80 other mindset coaches who do this. We found that pretty much with everyone, it doesn't matter if they're the Olympic level or a UFC fighter or a first year wrestler, you're strong in some areas and you're weak in other areas. It's true for me too. I have certain strengths mentally and I have certain areas that are very relatively weak. So we're only as strong as what? Our weakest link, so we have to pull that up. Let's say you're a 500 pound deadlifter, right? Let's say I have you know, 520 hamstrings, you know, a 540 lower back, but my grip is only 480. How much am I pulling? 480. So until I get my grip to the point where my hamstrings and my lower back is, I'm not gonna be able to pull the weight that I'm capable of. So we have to raise that. Also, you can't just think, I can't, I can't say this enough times, you can't just think about your mindset with technique. Coaches are showing great moves. After they show the moves, what are you doing? You're writing it down, and then your athletes will practice them. Same thing with weightlifting. You can't just think about squatting. You can't just think about bench pressing. You gotta get in the weight room and do it. It's common sense, right? Well, it's the same thing with mindset, and that's kind of misunderstood. You can't just think about mindset training. This is not mindset training. This is more of like an introduction. If I say it once, I say it 43 times, you have to do the things that we're telling you to do. When we talk about having a pre-match routine, you have to know what that is. We have four qualities that you have to have before a match to calm down and to be confident. Are you doing it, yes or not, yes or no? Are you practicing it, yes or no? We have another activity, another exercise, we talk about having a reset button. So what do you tell yourself when the ref makes a bad call? What do you, what do you tell yourself when you're hit with stalling? I know back in the 2015 World, World Championships, we were working with the women's team and pretty much every year, every match that year in Las Vegas, if you remember those world championships, anyone who had a lead with one point left in the match, they wound up blowing it and losing. Almost everyone I watched, men, women, freestyle, Greco. Why? Because in those moments, I'm leading by a point. What do I tell myself, right? So you need to know what you're telling yourself in adversity situations. Your opponent takes a cheap shot, does something dirty. 
What do you tell yourself? How many of us have lost a match because we got scored on first? Oh, I thought I was gonna kill this kid, but they score on me first and all of a sudden mentally, I mess up, right? I put too much pressure on myself. So the idea there is you need to do those exercises. Our whole program, it's a series of mindset worksheets where there's 70 of them. We break it down into the different mental muscles and you work on that. So again, we've been very blessed to be unbelievably successful with this. And I think if you just saw our Instagram today, we have about 40,000 followers. If you see, we have at least, I think it's like six, five or six national champions. How many three state champs? How many state place winners all around the country? And that's at least because not everyone, you submit the paperwork to people, they don't always get it back to you, right? You know, one thing about coaching, you don't always get the paperwork back. So we had a ton of success with this. And again, it's, it's because they're putting time in on their mindset. If you work on your technique, you're gonna improve there. If you work on your strength, you're gonna improve. But how do we work on our mindset? And unfortunately, what we normally do doesn't work. We tell our athletes, be confident. And the coach and the kid says, well, how do I be confident? And you tell them, just believe in yourself. Well, how do I believe in myself? Just be confident. So it's like circular, circular logic, right? And this happened to me throughout my career. Same thing, hey, when you go out there, you gotta be calm, you gotta be calm. Okay, well, you're the coach, you teach me, how do I be calm? Well, just relax. Well, how do I relax? Just be calm, you know? And the wheels on the bus go round and round. My, my niece loves that song, my goddaughter. But it's, but it's true. We don't give the actual exercises. I could ask everyone in this room, how do I build stronger legs? You'll know. What do I do? Squats, what else? Leg press, deadlift, someone said. You could tell me those exercises. If I needed to improve my bottom wrestling, you could all give me drills on what to do. Every one of you could improve my bottom wrestling. But if I say I want to improve my confidence, what are the exercises? We have nine, eight or nine worksheets dedicated specifically to confidence. Most people just don't know them. So we're happy to bring that in so we could bridge that gap between the physical and the mental. So I'll give you a great story that we had. One of our wrestlers from Bergen Catholic, we worked with them for many years. Um, kid placed in the state for the first time as a sophomore. So he had nothing to lose, so he was feeling real good about himself. Placed in the state as a sophomore. His dad contacts us in September and says he's more nervous than he's ever been. He's not enjoying wrestling. We see that, right? And we know what it's like. I know what it's like my senior year, just trying to get through matches, just try to get it over with. How does that feel? You, when you see your athletes just trying to get it over with. You know, all of us wouldn't give it all to just get back on the mat one day and to compete, right? We'd all love to be back on the mat and competing. But in our career, and we see our athletes, they wanna just get it over with because they're nervous. Okay, so the athlete's now ranked in the state for the first time in his career. It's September, dad calls us up, he's not enjoying the sport because now he's got something to lose, right? We told him, jump on our program, we'll work with him every week. So September, October, November, December, January, February, March, we won't count March, six months, worked with him every week. He's in the, st he's in the state semifinals now. We see him with Coach Bell, and before the match, he's smiling, he's laughing, he's giving him a high five. And I remember thinking, I was up there in the stands with my brother, and I said, man, I don't care if he wins or not. I'm, of course, I want him to win, but I'm just happy that he's in the biggest match of his life, and he's having fun. Wasn't like that for me. <laughs> wasn't like that for me. It wasn't like that for a lot of your wrestlers. He's having fun. Not only did he win that match, but then he winds up pulling off the biggest upset in the state finals and wins the whole thing. And then the next year, he repeated as a state champ. And now he's over at Rutgers, starting for them. So you see just these little changes in mindset and working on it consistently, just like you do with your technique, just like you do with your strength training, it gets results. It gets results. I could think when I first spoke at the National Wrestling Coaches Convention every year, if you could go to that, that's a great opportunity. Uh, it's down in um, Daytona Beach, it used to be in Fort Lauderdale. I gave my presentation. I'm sitting down at the pizza parlor down the road, a couple blocks down, and who comes over to me but the St. Cloud State coach. He said, you know, we really want to we love what you said about mindset. We were at your presentation. We want to start incorporating this with our team. We have a really good team. We've placed several times in the country, and now we want to win. We said, yeah, we'd love to work with you. We started working with them. And don't quote me on the numbers per se, but it's, I think like five, four out of the six years we were working with them, they were NCAA champs. And then one of their athletes, I could tell you a great story the one year, he had to beat the defending national champ in the wrestle off just to start. So the 125 pounder was Prescott at the time. He won the NCAAs the year before and we were working with the team. Then the next year, freshman Brett Velasquez, he comes in, he wanted to be a national champ. He had to go through the national champ first in the practice room. Beats him 
And now we're in a heck of a spot of St. Cloud State because he's unseated, right? The one guy would have been top seed at the NCAAs. We have a freshman come in there and beat him. He goes in unseated, wins the NCAA tournament. Now what happens after you win? They put a microphone in your face. That's the number one fear in, in life, I think it is, right? The number one fear is public speaking. The number two fear is death. So what does that tell you? What did Jerry Seinfeld say? Most people would rather be in the casket than saying the eulogy, right? So a little joke there. You can laugh. It's OK. So, <laughs> right? we're, all, we're not all intensity. You know, this could be fun. We could have fun, too. That's important. But it's true. Now they put the microphone in front of your face and say, what were you thinking? You, know, you were unseated coming in. You're only a freshman. And the first thing that this guy thinks after winning the biggest match of his life is, our team does a lot of mindset training. We don't focus on the records, the rankings, the seedings, the predictions. I give Rollway a shout out, Coach Gray, Coach Stuber. They always let us wrestle over there at Rollway. We did a lot of great work over there. Coach Tanzola too, we were around him for years. He was coaching us since we were in fourth grade, me and my brothers. I think a Caldwell, he'd wrestle anyone. Anyone, anytime, any place. I think of Andrew Flanagan, that's another name that comes to mind. I mean, how many times when we were in high school, I remember, you know, if there was like an all-star meet, oh, I'm gonna be the top seed or I'm gonna have a certain seed, so I'm not gonna wrestle in the all-star meet. Right? That happened to a lot of us. I know it happened with me and my brothers. I hate to say it, it's embarrassing to say, but we had opportunities to wrestle in the All-Star meet, but well, we're gonna have a certain seed and we don't want the person to steal our seed. We all think that. We all think that, right? You gotta start looking at the very best. Guys like Caldwell, guys like Flanagan, they'd wrestle anywhere. Anyone, anywhere, anytime. Ben Askren, now wrestling Jordan Burroughs, right? So that's gotta be the attitude. That's why you get a Kyle Dake. That's why you get a, a Ben Askren. I was just with Anatoly Belaglasov. He's the only wrestler to win three world championships in three different weights. A lot of people don't know that. So Frank Chimizo is chasing after him right now. Chimizo won two weight classes, world championships. He's going for a third, but Anatoly is still the champ. He's still the best. He has the record. Why? Because he'll wrestle anyone, anywhere, any weight. And a lot of the wrestlers, and because we talk to them all across the country, they don't want to wrestle a weight class up. They're thinking about their weight all year round. I know I'm going off on a tangent there a little bit, but it's true. There's, they got the weight in their head all year round, so they're afraid to wrestle people who's a weight class above them. It doesn't make sense. In practice, your practice partner is 15 pounds heavier than you. Now you actually make weight at a tournament, and you're saying this guy was big. Who knows what I'm talking about? Say I. What the heck? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's a mental thing. So we got to work on it. That's the key. That's what I'm talking about. So it all started there at St. Cloud State at the pizza parlor after the presentation, just like this. We started working with them four times. They were national champs. Now, it's not all just mindset, OK? It's being the total package. Nutri nutrition, sleep, exercise, conditioning, mindset. It's everything. You've got to be the total package. So when I tell athletes, whether you're struggling, mindset training is not just for people who are struggling, OK? We all have difficult areas that we got to improve, but it's also for the best athletes because who are the college coaches coming to see? The average guy or the best guy? The best. Who's most likely to be on Flow Wrestling? Who's most likely to be in the newspaper? Who are the cameras following around? The best guys. So the best guys I often find need mindset training even more than the average guys. So you don't want to look at it as, oh, you have a problem, right? Or sometimes coaches will say, well, I don't want to work on mindset because I don't want my kid to think they have a problem. OK, so let's apply that to strength. I'm not going to lift weights because I don't want the kid to think he's weak. See, it doesn't make sense, right? So we got we to think about what we're doing. So basically, make a long story short, we divide our mindset program into two phases. When we work with the Olympic team, they break their training schedule down into phases. There's a pre-competitive phase. There's a competitive phase. There's a peaking phase. There's a rest and recovery. You know what I'm talking about, right? There's different phases of our training. There's different, train, there's different phases of your technique. You don't show moves. You don't run the same practice in November that you do in February. It's the same thing with mindset. And honestly, this is, I've never seen, I've never seen mindset broken down like this where it's divided into different phases. So we break it down into after the wrestling season, which is phase one, which is dedicated towards the mental muscles of goal setting, mental toughness, motivation. So laying the foundation of mindset, making sure the kid's staying off the street. He's going to bed at a reasonable time. He's not in bad relationships. He's getting his workouts in. That's after the wrestling season, phase one. Then in season, we gear towards peak performance, which is relaxing under pressure, confidence, aggressiveness, pulling the trigger. We've developed a whole series on how do we make athletes more aggressive? How do you build the killer instinct? So we talk about how to develop a competitive alter ego. So when they step on the mat, they could actually be someone different. Might sound funny, may sound like make-believe, but look at the top UFC fighters. 
They have their alter ego. John Bones Jones, before he fights, I think the day of the fight, he watches like an hour's worth of, of watching a lion on YouTube clips attack his prey, all right? So his alter ego is a lion, right? You think of all your, fa all your favorite UFC fighters, they all have that alter ego. Chuck the Iceman Liddell, Connor Notorious Gregor. So when they step into the octagon, they could be someone else. Off the mat, they're a nice guy, smiling, happy, but they step on the mat, they're out for blood, right? It's not just, oh, I'm winning by one point or two points, so I'm just gonna coast. It's stick them in the ground. It's step right on their throat, right? So you take the match, now you gotta take their heart. That takes a lot of time to develop that kind of killer instinct. So it, you know, you gotta, you gotta work on it. So developing that alter ego. Eminem, Marshall Mathers, right? His real name is Marshall Mathers, but he steps on the stage. What's his alter ego? No, Slim Shady, right? A guy who seems very quiet and shy, now he's on stage in front of tens and thousands of people. How do you flip the switch? He's got his alter ego. Beyonce does it. I don't know if a lot of you know this, but her alter ego is Sasha Fierce. When she step, steps on the stage at the Super Bowl or somewhere else, she calls herself Sasha Fierce. So now she could turn it on. She knows how to kick it into high gear. Do your athletes know how to do that? So like those are the kind of things we'd work on. How about the Boz? The Boz back in the, uh, you see 30 for 30, ESPN, right? He was able to turn himself into a beast. So we gotta learn those little strategies to, to bring ourselves into beast mode. So a lot of great stuff. Obviously, I could talk about it all the time, but I say it, I'll bring it back to our initial message. Of course, we want to build champions, but it's learning these same mental toughness lessons, the same relaxing under pressure lessons in school and in your life, right? We have a kid, we know that work, work with the Bergen Catholic, kid wants to get into Brown University. Great, we'd love for him to do that. Does really well in the practice SATs. What's the problem though? That doesn't count, right? He chokes on the real SATs, and I heard this all the time as a school psychologist, maybe you're familiar with this, my kid's not a good uh, standardized test taker. Okay, well you need to get good at that or you're not gonna get into a good college or you're not gonna get into the best college. And a lot of it, I'm telling you as a school psychologist, yes, some people were a little bit better at standardized tests, but a lot of people it's in their head. They're going in there mentally handicapping themselves. So we work with him on not just wrestling, but taking those same lessons, and now while he's taking the, the real SATs, he's not thinking about Harvard. He's not thinking about letting his parents down. He's not thinking about looking good in front of his teachers, right? Earning the respect of his classmates. So it's the same thing. So wrestling, school, job interview in the future, mindset is mindset, right? We always say mindset makes the difference. So anything you guys need, we have a sign-in sheet that's going around. Make sure you sign in there. We've got pump out free information constantly all the time. We're happy to stick around and take questions. But it's great being here, and thank you very much. And that's a wrap for today's podcast. I'm Gene Zanetti from Wrestling Mindset. Make sure you check out our website, wrestlingmindset.com. Get our ebook. Make sure you get that ebook. Great information represents some of the best information that we have. Lessons that we've learned from some of the top wrestlers in the world, lessons that we've learned from our own experience, and the best that research can provide. Get the ebook, wrestlingmindset.com. Also, as an individual, make sure you personally sign up for the one on one free mindset consultation. The one on one free mindset consultation. Make sure you fill out the form and do that as soon as possible. The best results always come from one on one individual.